And thank you again so much for joining us. Darren Hindley here with you, and you are watching The Bronx, your voice, your vote 2008, the special that will answer all of your election questions. We're joined by our political contributors, Miguel Perez, Bob Nolan, and Mariah Starr. We talked about the presidential candidates. We've moved now to the vice presidential candidates. Alaska Governor Sarah Palin, the vice presidential pick for the GOP ticket, has gotten a lot of press since John McCain named her as his running mate. She's been a little bit of hot water, though, lately, from Trubergate to her $150,000 wardrobe supplied by the campaign. Here is what some in the Bronx think of Governor Sarah Palin. I well, the economy, for one, because I'm on this side. And I think that they're really attacking Sarah Palin. And I understand that, you know, she's a new face, which is also a plus that we're getting a fresh face. But, um... I think they're being a little, a little, you know, I don't know if not fair is the word, but I, I think it's a little much because here they are saying things about Sarah Palin and oh, these interviews and she's done awful and they're going on, but they failed to bring up the other side of what about Joe Biden? I'll be honest, John McCain's too old and if he dies, I don't think Sarah Palin can run the country. So you don't have faith in Sarah Palin? Not at all. Um, what do you think she's lacking? I think they just put her there to um, get Hillary's votes. It wasn't even about um, that she's qualified for the job. And so there you see just a few of the comments that you heard about uh, Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. As you heard in the comments, you know, some people still talking about the issue of age. <laughs> this gentleman saying if, if uh, McCain dies, then you have to be worried about the whole, the whole Sarah Palin factor. And I think that that's a, a, a well, it's been raised across uh, the United States. Question of sorts is, you know, the $150,000 wardrobe and the Trooper Gate scandal, there's some people who say, okay, every politician has something, but the fact that you can only come up with these two things, it's got to be a plus for Sarah Palin. Darren, I don't care about her wardrobe. I don't think that that's a very uh, important issue. I do care about the issue of the abuse of power. And for John McCain to have selected a governor who we've only known now for 60 days to be his vice presidential nominee, and then at the same time, she is under investigation in Albany for, uh, and, and Alaska for abuse of power is beyond me. I will never understand why he made such a selection. I think that after the votes are counted on Tuesday, when, Ob uh, when Barack Obama wins, I think one of the major reasons why he will win is, aside from the economy and the fact that it's time for a change of parties, will be the fact that John McCain selected the wrong person for mm -hmm. vice president. He should have selected somebody who, was, who, who has much more experience. And w as we've seen, she's gotten so much publicity, some of the positive and negative, she's taken away from John McCain. And I think it's really hurt people understanding what his true message was. Miguel, I want to ask this because, you know, oh, I remember specifically at CNN, they had when the vice presidential candidates were about to be picked and we were watching across nationally, correspondents were camped outside of people's doors <laughs> uh, when Joe Biden was possibly going to be the pick. Or, uh, and then on the, on the other side, you had you know, Mitt Romney and then you had Huckabee, but nobody was in Alaska when Sarah Palin was picked. It was a surprise to everyone, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, it, and it helped McCain in the beginning for, uh, for a couple of weeks there during the you know, Republican convention. He gave him a lift right after the Republican, it was, it was either the convention itself or Sarah Palin or both, but he got a hell of a lift in the polls for a, few, for a couple of two or three weeks there. Unfortunately for McCain, what he did is he put all his eggs in that basket. And he needed to fight several fronts. He thought, Sarah Palin is so popular, that's going to get me over. Mm -hmm. And he needed to fight several fronts, and he didn't. They, they put all their, all their emphasis on Sarah Palin. And then, as we got to know Sarah Palin, we got to say, uh, you know, I'm not so worried about the investigation. I'm certainly not worried about her wardrobe, because, I mean, the, e either party has the right to use their money as they please, whether it's on balloons for the convention or Sarah Palin's dresses. I don't care mm -hmm. how they use their money. It's up to them. So that's, and the investigation, I think it's, it's, it's not a serious thing that they're investigating to begin with. Uh, I think it's very phony stuff that's going on in Alaska to try to make her look bad. The problem with Sarah Palin is that she, she has demonstrated that she is not qualified to be president of the United States. That's the bottom line. But, Mariah, what people do say is when it comes to the issue of the energy, something that's on the minds of a lot of people when it's out in Alaska, she's really done a yeoman's job. Uh, she has done a fairly decent job in Alaska, it's true. And I think one of, one of the things that people are missing with Sarah Palin is that 
um, she, under any other circumstances, might be qualified. In a crisis, no. But in a time of peace, yes. I mean, she has about as much experience as George Bush had in 2000. So when you're looking at Sarah Palin, there are two things to consider. Um, when a candidate is running in the primaries, they go to their base. When they go to the general election, they go to the center. What McCain did was he went to the center in the primaries, then he went to the base for the general election with Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. That was a mistake. And it showed in the interviews because she is so far to the right on almost every single policy issues, she's turning up all the moderates and independents. That's what's hurting her. But she's energizing the base. So what, what we have here really is Palin as a viable candidate ordinarily, but for the American people at this exact moment, she doesn't qualify. I agree. I agree completely. I, she does not qualify. Unfortunately, McCain uh, thought that uh, for some reason he was going to be able to protect her in such a way that the media wasn't going to be able to find out who she really is and how, she, how prepared she is. But let me tell you something. Going back to the age question, because I really think that this, you know, you kept, you kept saying, Mariah, that, that, uh, that, you know, maybe because of his age, McCain is, is faulty somewhere, or maybe committing gaffes. You know, what about Joe Biden? That he's, he's not qualified true. either then. Right. Or he's sure. too old, uh, you know, right. because he, yeah. he, he makes a mistake every, every, every five minutes. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, a lot more than McCain. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. another thing to consider. I don't think McCain is, is losing it in any way, shape, or form. He's very sharp. I mean, he doesn't move as fast as he, as he used to, but I think, you know, mind-wise, uh, you know, he's, he's ready to be president. Yes, no, did, McCa did McCain's pick of Sarah Palin, good choice, bad choice? A terrible choice. Mariah? Even. The worst. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's why we've got political contributors, because you get all different angles. And we have to take a quick break. But coming up, we'll continue to talk more about election 2008, and they will give us their thoughts on one of the most talked about election issues, our economy. And we'll also talk more about Joe Biden when we come back. <laughs> 